On this channel, we normally cover big names and players who accomplished a lot in StarCraft 2 and other artist games. However, it's not only them who make history of our beloved game. There are also other heroes and just community souls who contribute a lot to our ecosystem. Some players love the game so much they try to develop their own playstyle and stick to it no matter how well it works on a pro scene, and how amazing it is to see when they manage to accomplish something big thanks to their dedication and passion. So today we'll talk about one such player. Perhaps you haven't heard his name, and even though he hasn't won any global finals or big premier events, he is still an important part of the community. Meet Goody, a German term player who is known for his mech playstyle. Panzer General, as he was often nicknamed by the community, started playing this game as early as in 2010. But he also had past experience in StarCraft Brood War as a Protoss player. Even though he was enjoying big results there, it was a good training ground for the sequel. In StarCraft 2, Goody would soon reach Grandmaster level and start competing in weekly cups where he would find a lot of success, beating many prominent players. The best part about his gameplay was his absolutely unique playstyle, which revolved around mechanized units, Hellions, tanks and mostly force, with occasional banshees and medivac drops. It might sound not so special nowadays, but back in Wings of Liberty, this was a breath of fresh air amidst all other Theron players who were mostly utilizing bio playstyle. This was due to mech being actually terrible on a very high level. It could be used here and there as a surprise tactic, but it was just generally a bad choice as a playstyle for every single map, since there were many loopholes that other races could abuse against a mech player. From low mobility to predictability and very passive playstyle, there were so many drawbacks for that playstyle, and yet Goody still chose to play with it almost on every single map. This is what made him a community hero. Mech playstyle has always been described as slow, and that's kinda true, and he only had an average of 60 APM, which was almost 5 times lower than average for pro players. This playstyle and his low speed were so relatable for casual audience, and his resilience to stick to his playstyle was a perfect combo that made everybody like him. This was also his kryptonite. His preferences would become known to almost every pro player, and this made him extremely vulnerable to adaptive playstyles that could just do less scouting and cut corners since they knew what to expect. Considering mech was also generally worse than bio, this contributed to a mountain of difficulties that Goody had to face each single game. And nevertheless, he had his great shots at many tournaments. Specifically, let's talk about TSL3, one of the most prestigious tournaments of that time, where Goody faced Nasty in the first round of his bracket. This was basically a death sentence, since Nasty was already considered to be the best Zerg player in the world, and he already had one brilliant GSL victory with more to come in the future. So, map number one went much as expected. Knowing that Goody is a turtle mech player, Nasty just took over the whole map, made almost 100 workers and kept on putting pressure until Goody eventually ran out of steam. It's just not gonna work, he's got a bunch of Hellions moving into the bottom right, trying to take out all the drones there, very nice, but uh, I, I really just feel it's too little too late. Yeah, the, the problem here is that he actually needs to deal with those Brood Lords, that's the main thing. He does have one Viking here who cannot pull that, that Fire Finger fast enough to kill these options, it's just one Viking versus all these Brood Lords. There is no anti-air support here for Nesty, so can he actually get out enough Viking to destroy these. The second Viking arriving just now needs to focus fire them down as quickly as possible. But Nesty is going to be able to just constantly stream units here. Keep an eye on the minimap of all the reinforcements that are going to be streaming down here. And now Goody is backed into a corner on the left side. The Roaches are going to show up to reinforce this and it looks like it will be enough to clean this out. The Roaches just need to kill the Thors and the Broodlords can do the rest here. And it looks like Goody will end up losing this army. The army sizes are 161 to 100 and now Nesty is going to be marching into the main here. In the second game, Goody the event for a fake bunker rush that caused Nasty to overreact, giving a nice early game advantage. He then followed up with a surprise attack and later on managed to close the game with another Hellion Banshee push. Is this timing going to be enough? He's bringing SCVs as well as the Raven in here. Could use that auto turret if he wants to, because really the energy is not going to be good for anything else. And this could be a lot of trouble for Nasty, especially if he loses these two queens and the spine car is not even completed yet. Goody really hitting a good timing here with this attack. Yeah, especially having blue flames, he's just melting those zerglings down. The two queens are all that remains. 
production tab showing only Zordons on the way as a Roach Warren just completes, and those are not good against the unit composition that Goody has here, including the Banshees. It'll be it'll do well to deal with the uh, Hellions, but oh my god, Hellions moving in now against undefended drones. This is just like a Hellions wet dream as he moves forward, cuts up so many S or excuse me, so many drones and so many Zordlings, and that's got to be it. And SP, there's no way he can recover from this. What could he do except go for some crazy counterattack with roaches? Spawning a few roaches, there's just so much DPS in these marines, and having the healing potential. The medevac, Nesky is forced to say GG. Goody has tied up the series 1-1, and for the first time today, we're going to a game number 3. But even after that victory, there was not much hope for the German player, since Nesty was just way more skillful and experienced. So for the last map, Goody also went for a cheeky one base attack with marines, siege tanks and hellions. Even though Nesty had somewhat scouted that on approach, this push caused a lot of problems. Eventually this allowed Goody to have a small advantage that he still had to capitalize on, so he went for a big mech push in mid game. Even though Nesty was probably aware that he'll be facing mech again, he still made an army composition which was probably not the best for an upcoming fight. It was Roach and Banelings that had a big difficulty approaching the Terran tank army. Because of that, the only remaining option was a base trade for the Zerg player. If he can lock down this expansion on the left side, that is the only income for Nesty right now. Nesty is not mining from a single location, so it is going to come down to can he actually kill this expansion? There is a lot of roaches here. Nesty has many more roaches in his main as well. Can he save this after your time? Drones getting pulled off the line. The sea tanks are not seen though, so they are, some of them are, but not all of them. A lot of the drones are going to get taken out here. Can Nesty hold? Here comes the flank attack with all these roaches. It does look like Nesty will just barely hold off here as the sea tanks are now completely vulnerable. Even one Viking on the ground. Actually, Nesty is going to win this battle. It doesn't quite look like it. And Whoa! The, if you look at the US tab, is definitely at nine drones. How oh did he just do that? And basically, Nesty is mining from nowhere right now. Yeah, it's over. But he held off perfectly at, at, I think a lot of Terran players would have probably just given up there. But then he realized, wait, Nesty is mined out in his main. There's no natural hatchery remaining. I've already killed the third base. All he has is wow. one base with all of his drones. And there's going to be the GG. Nesty gets knocked out of the tournament as well. I 100% did not expect this at all. Even about 95 of the way percent through this replay. I thought for <laughs> sure that Nesty had it. And this is how Goody managed to knock out the best player in the world at that time, playing with his favorite playstyle and two digits APM against the living legend. Another miracle that happened in StarCraft 2, just like that. However, his run wasn't really long afterwards, he got quickly knocked out by Naniva and this was the end of this tournament for our hero of the story. Other than that big victory, Goody didn't really have great results. Yes, he was winning some local weeklies here and there, but he never really rose to become a champion of a premier tournament and, of course, eventually he was overshadowed by many other players. With the rising skill level and super hot competition, it was inevitable to happen. The patches won't also help in the Terran race in particular, saying nothing about weak mech playstyle. Goody still plays StarCraft 2 nowadays and it's really sad that he didn't experience the prime of mech playstyle because now it's much stronger and versatile than it used to be. And who knows, maybe if it was the case in 2011, he would have become one of the greatest Terran players of his time. We'll never know, but he's still a Grandmaster player, by the way. He even appeared in one of the latest Hearthstone videos, and there is a cool quote about Goody from Kevin that I would like to show you. Goody, uh, also known as Sasha Loop, der Panzer General, the king of the tanks, uh, at the start of StarCraft II, at the very beginning in 2010, when all of you were still in university uh, or the late phases in high school, Sasha Loop, Goody, um, played Mac. And was it perfect? No. Was it mechanically very bad? Yes. But his brain, it worked like a machine. He saw tank positions where others just saw uh, terrain. And he saw spots to defend in where others just saw a cliff. You know, Goody was the first real mecher. He was extremely powerful. Goody was a living example that you can accomplish success even if you just stick to what you love and develop your skills accordingly. Even with his low APM, he was able to defeat many great players and become loved and cherished by the community. This once again proves StarCraft 2 is a great game for everyone and there is a lot of cool things that you can find for yourself in this beautiful artist. That's the end of the story. 
follow our channel for more StarCraft content and check out our story about mech playstyle and Wings of Liberty and how to do swarm. Have a nice day and see you next time.